Hello, this is Wes Hickey, Chair of the Department of Educational Leadership at the University of Texas at Tyler. And what I want to talk about now relates to some legislation that came up recently dealing with lunch shaming, in that many kids who didn't have the money to be able to get a lunch were oftentimes turned away or even had the lunches that they'd already had in their hands dumped in the trash because they didn't have the money to actually pay for it. If we want to go back to looking at Abraham Maslow and his hierarchy of needs, we know that this is a big issue. Is that the most basic area that any student has is the need to have their physiological needs met, and that includes having the food that they need to be able to perform at a high level. And I remember back in the days when I was a coach is that we oftentimes worried about our players because we knew when they went home, they didn't always have the food that they needed to be able to you know, perform well in school, perform well on the field of play, whatever it was, because many of them were from houses where there was a very high poverty. In fact, in Texas, according to the PAPR, is that 59% of all the students in Texas are economically disadvantaged. And so uh, many times, the one place that they're going to have lunch is going to be at school. And so there needs to be attempts to try to take care of them in many ways. And I'm not trying to downplay the need to make sure that we balance our budgets and do things like that. But when we look at the absolute needs of students, having a good lunch, having a good breakfast, having the food they need is going to be important for any type of achievement that we're going to see with them. Well, Helen Giddings will recognize this and push through what she called a lunch shaming amendment. And it requires schools to adopt a grace period for students who don't have lunch money, where they still get their lunches for a while, can pay at a later date. And a lot of schools do this anyway. We, all, we care about what goes on with our kids, and we want to do what we can to make sure they get what they need. But there have been some sensational stories that indicate that this is not something that takes place. But this really only scratches the surface of the need that we have when we have 59% of our students that uh, are low SES and oftentimes have a difficult time knowing where their next food's going to come from. Now, Representative Giddings also has started a donation page that accepts contributions to clear debts of any schools that feed, feed students that are unable to pay. And I will tell you, I applaud Helen Giddings for her efforts to try to take care of our students. You know, I don't know that it's going to take care of the underlying cause and the big issues that we have, but at least it's a step forward to try to recognize that we need to make sure that our students get the lunch that they need. At UT Tyler, let us know what we can do, and remember to inspire and educate the architects of human potential.